Get everyone, my name is B Asian Dad, and today we're going to look into this Dell Latitude 7320. It's a 13 inch ultra light business class laptop, and we're going to have a look into the temperatures and fan noise of this computer as well as the features and also the internals. I will be also putting timestamps along this video so you can actually skip to the different sections that you may be more interested in, just to make things easier for you. Now first off, we'll have a look at what this computer can be configured with. With the processor wise, it is using the 11th gen Intel Core and you can either get the i5 or the i7. As for RAM wise, it can go up to maximum capacity of 32 gigs. Now the 32 gigs is integrated to the system board or soldered to the system board so you need to be careful when you actually order this computer because you can't upgrade it later on. As for storage wise it's got one slot of M.2 NVMe SSD and as for the graphics it has only got the Intel integrated graphics. Now as for display wise it's pretty much the same as the previous model which is the Dell Latitude 7310 but with this year's model in 2021, they've added a new option, which is the full HD 400 nit of brightness. Now, unfortunately, I have not got that, which I thought I did in my unboxing video, but I then checked this out. It's only about the 215 nit one is the one I got. So unfortunately, I cannot test the 400 nit, but they do have a 400 nit, which is one of the things I actually requested for the video in my 7310 review video. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description up there. So if you want to check that one out after this video. Now, it's great to hear that Dell's actually listened to that. So there is a 400 nit of brightness, which means you can actually go outside. It should be able to handle the outdoors a lot more better. Now, of course, it's got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. And this one is the Evo. So that's part of that certification. And as for the webcam, again, this was something I requested in my 7310, the previous model for what they have this now added in is the full HD webcam. Fantastic, there is a 720p webcam, but we've now got a full HD webcam option in, which is fantastic, which is what I've got in this particular configuration. This is a recording from the 1080p webcam from the Latitude 7320. Now this is the video and audio unedited, so you can see and hear the quality is like from the full HD webcam. Now, as always, I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my studio lights turned on, and I also have the room lights turned on as well. So I'm going to turn off my studio light, and you'll hopefully see this adjust for my ambient light. Now, I've actually got four down lights in this room, and I've got two in front of me, and I've got two behind me. Now, the two in front of me are actually quite far away, so I'll actually consider this in a quite dark environment. So if you're in an office environment, you get a lot more light than what this will be. So Hopefully, you'll see some pretty good quality. Now I'm going to turn my studio light back on. And of course, with better lighting, we've got better pictures as well too. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this video and audio of this 1080p webcam. Put a comment below, love to hear what it is. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the right hand side of the computer, we've got the security lot slot. And then we've got a full size HDMI port, which is version 2.0. And then we have a USB type A port which also does PowerShare. And then we've got a Thunderbolt port, which is USB type C. And then we have a micro SD card reader. And then underneath we have a USM tray. Looking at the left hand side of the computer, we've got another Thunderbolt port, which is USB type C. Now any of the two USB type C ports, you can charge the computer using those two. And then we have the exhaust vent, and then headphone jack, and then the optional smart card slot. The weight of the Latitude 7320 is 1.19 kilos. Add in the 65 watt power adapter becomes a total weight of 1.51 kilos that you'll be carrying around. There are two speakers located on the bottom front of the laptop. And when I tested out the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure at a peak of 79 decibels. So that's actually not bad. It could be louder, but not bad at all. So you should be able to actually still be able to do your presentation when you're outdoors. So you shouldn't be struggling too bad on about 79 decibels. For the sound quality, it did surprise me. It actually had a bit of bass and the mids was quite good as they usually are. And for the highs, they weren't bad at all and didn't distort 
uh, or when it was put up really high in level. And the clarity, you did hear the separation between all three different levels, which was really good. And as for the acoustic wise, it wasn't all the way to the front. You actually hear, it gives you a bit of a surround sound sort of feel to it, which was actually good as well too. So overall, as a business class laptop, the speakers on the 7320, not bad at all. I've got to say, probably above average. The Latitude 7320 does come with a 65 watt power adapter and it does charge the laptop via the USB-C port. Now with the battery wires there are two configurations you can actually have this configured with, either a 42 watt hour battery which is a free cell or a 63 watt hour battery which is a 4 cell. Now this one I've got here is a 63 watt hour battery. Now both batteries actually support express charge which means you can charge the battery from 0 to 35% in 20 minutes time. Now I did perform the high battery life test on this particular computer here and I tested in my five different modes. So in best performance mode it managed to get two hours and 15 minutes and in better performance mode it managed to get two hours and 35 minutes and in better battery mode it managed to get seven hours and 15 minutes and in battery saving mode it managed to get 10 hours and 30 minutes and in my media mode it managed to get 10 hours and 10 minutes. Overall the battery life on this computer is not bad but I do want to make a disclaimer that my battery life tests I do do put on at a very consistent workload when I do perform my battery life tests. Now you should actually get better numbers than what I get because most of the tasks really doesn't hammer the system resources as a consistent level like what I do with my testers. So I'm just kind of giving you the worst case scenario. As for the temperatures and fair noise of the Dell Latitude 7320, when I put this computer on load, I found most of the heat was concentrated near the top center of the keyboard, specifically where the Y and U key is. And that's unsurprising because that's where the processor lays underneath there. Now there's also another area that you'll find it heats up a little bit and that is really located near where the sticker is, actually on the bottom right of the laptop. And that is when you actually use the hard drive a lot. If you're hitting that very intensively, then that heats up as well. But when it's heated up at its maximum rate, it's still very touchable, so you won't actually find it uncomfortable at all, so you can still put your palm rest down there. Now, when I took my measurements, my ambient temperature was 19 degrees Celsius. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle, and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 34 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 34 decibels. Then I'll put the computer on 20% low, so that's average use. So that's like tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web, and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 38 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 37 decibels. Then I put the computer on 50% load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 37 and a half degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it hit a maximum of 38 decibels. Then I put the computer at 100% load and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 42 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 39 decibels. I also measured the bottom back cover of the computer and the hottest area measured in at 42 degrees Celsius. And of course the fan noise was still at 39 decibels. Comparing the Dell Latitude 7320 with its previous model, I can see that it does run cooler, which means that Dell's improvement on the thermal system has worked. Let's have the behavior of this processor. Now this Latitude 7320 is configured with an i5-1145G7. Now looking on the Intel website about this processor, we can see that its base clock speed at its lowest point uh, 1.1 gigahertz for its base clock speed and that's if it's got a TDP of 12 watts. Now if, if it's got enough power which is at maximum power at 28 watts it can do 2.6 gigahertz at its base clock speed. So we're going to have a look at this uh, back to the end here. Now just to let you know that in the Dell Power Manager, now this is a new software created in 2020 
that Dell has produced. Now, this is traditionally found in BIOS, but you can actually change the setting on the fly through a software now, which is great. And this is to do with thermal management. So I've got it set to ultra performance, which means we've got better cooling and we also have allowing it to give as much power as possible to the processor. And I've got this computer on charged on mains power at the moment, so I'm giving it its best chance that it can do. So I'm expecting it to give me uh, 28 watts at its highest DDP. So going back to the load here, I've got the both processor, RAM and hard drive on load for over three hours now and we've got a very good stability performance from the processor anywhere between 2.2 to about 2.6 gigahertz. So we are touching that 2.6 gigahertz uh, but it is fluctuating between 2.2 to about 2.6 gigahertz. So there is a little what I would call thermal throttling, uh, even at its highest point, uh, but it's not a crazy amount because we're not down to around about the 1.1 gigahertz, uh, but we are at 28 watts for the TDP. So we're doing pretty good. So it is hitting its base clock speed at 2.6 gigahertz. So we're doing all right there. Let's have a look at the burst speed performance and the behavior of the processor. Now I'm gonna put this computer on load now and we'll start the stopwatch and we'll see this for the time. So the speed is going just hitting about 3.98 gigahertz and it's pretty much there stable at that sort of speed. And I'm just gonna bring up, and I have this computer on ultra performance as well and I've got it connected to mains as well. So at about 20 seconds, we're still maintained at 3.98 gigahertz, which is quite good and we're just gonna continue on to about 30 seconds it's still maintaining that high speed burst speed there so that's looking good and it's still maintaining after a minute it still is 3.98 gigahertz now again the processor ram and hard drive is on load now i just saw that it just went down so around about one minute and five seconds it then dipped down to about three gigahertz so it just lost it very quickly actually it didn't actually just lost it just lost it in one go very quick uh, it wasn't a gradual loss, so you're looking around about a minute and then it starts losing um, the actual high burst speed. So this is going to bring it down and we're slowly going to touch the base clock speed very soon at around about 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, so we're just uh, close to about a minute and 40 and that already has touched the base clock speed and gone to thermal throttling now straight up. Just to let you guys know, so hope you find this useful if you did. Give it a thumbs up for me or smack that like button for me as well. Let's have a look at the keyboard. Now the keyboard has not changed from the previous model. It still maintains very good key travel and each individual keys has a smooth texture finish to the keys and it's got nice ample space in between the keys as well. Now the power button is also integrated into the keyboard on the very top right hand corner and if you've got option in the optional fingerprint scanner, it is integrated into the power button as well. As for the trackpad, it's got a very nice smooth glass finish to the texture of the trackpad. It's got really gorgeous, of it, especially if you've got very dry hands. Now, if you've got a little bit moist hands, it still registers quite happily and it still glides very nicely as well. It is multi gesture and it is a mechanical, so it's actually hinged at the top and you can depress at the bottom down here as well too. Now, as for sizing, I find it quite a very nice size. It's not overly small and it's not overly large as well. So I find it perfect for a 13 inch. I really enjoy this size that they've put into this trackpad here in this laptop here as well. Now as for the palm rest you'll find that it's actually quite nice. You actually, I've got small arms here and even with my palm sitting on the, the side here when I'm typing with my home keys I am not got my palm on the trackpad so that's really good that's what I mean by the size of this trackpad is really decent I must have to say. As for the display it does have very nice narrow side bezels and the top and bottom bezel, it's not too bad at all. It has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 and I have tested this display. It does not have PWM. As for the build construction of this computer here, it is mostly made of plastic. There's no way to hide it. It's pretty much plastic on the bottom, even on the 
truss inside is plastic as well too. The top one here I've got is carbon fiber weave as well. So that's not too bad. I must, it does look quite nice premium on the carbon weave and the hinge, it is plastic, but it does very well. So even with my one finger test, you can one finger, you can actually lift the, quite easily lift it up and you can pretty much go all the way to about, hits about 90 degrees. After that, you do need to the second little bit extra push on from there. Now, of course, this is the clamshell, so it can go up to 180 degrees. And also with the hinge here, and I can, I know people have been asking me about this. So when I actually hold this on the hinge side and if I'm moving it about, you won't find that the hinge let loose of the lid and the bottom of the computer here. So it's doing really well, the hinge. Now, of course, with the build construction, it doesn't have that much flex at all on that side. And as for the keyboard, not that much flex at all as well too. These things, the Latitude series is definitely built to last a lot of punishment uh, these are usually not been the people who actually use these are usually not the owners of these computers so these are designed like just like your rental cars these are designed to be extremely durable so i have no complaints of that even if it was plastic i think they done very well and these are very serviceable computers as well Looking at the internals of the Latitude 7320, we'll start off with the battery first. So this is a 63 watt hour four cell battery and right above the battery is the connector for the battery to the system board. So if you need to disconnect the battery, for example, you're just doing some troubleshooting for some power issues or resetting the computer, or if you're actually working on the system board, do take the battery out. So that's the connector there. Now on the left hand here is the SIM card slot and then above here is this empty slot is where the WAN card would normally be. And here is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module here. And on the right is the one slot of M.2 NVMe SSD. So I've only got one slot here. And above here is the CPU or processor. And we've got dual heat pipes and to the system fan. Now, as you can see, we actually don't have any DIMM slots for the RAM because all the RAM is integrated into the system board. I did perform the benchmarks for this particular computer. Now, this one is configured with an i5-11 45 G7 with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 SSD. So I'll put up the scores for Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark 10, Crystal Disk Mark, Geekbench 5, MATLAB 2020B, and Spec View Pref. And also throw in a few gaming benchmarks like Eugene Engine, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, and Immortal Phoenix Rising. Overall, I find the Dell Latitude 7320 a nice compact computer, and it's got a good range amount of ports, and seeing the improvement with the option for a much brighter display, and also a full HD webcam, and it actually has a decent speakers, I've got to say. I really could recommend the Dell Latitude 7320. Now, if you find this video informative or enjoyed it, or even to support my channel, hit that like button for me. It does support me and also supports my channel. Now, if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel as well by hitting that subscribe button. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.